Welcome back for a third episode of Growing Lemon Trees from Seeds. It's day 111. The seedling that I view to be the more promising one on the right has a few of its leaves on the bottom, the early original leaves, um, a little browned at the ends, and one of them has been shed. Uh, this seedling, which looks a little more atypical in my opinion, has a bit of leaf curl with its early leaves, but they otherwise seem to be healthy. They've matured. They won't get any bigger. They're a very dark green, and the new foliage is lighter in color. So I believe that this one is going to be the more successful one just because its new leaves are much bigger and it seems to be responding better except for those uh, small little leaves that have been shed at the bottom. I drilled two holes on the very bottom of all five dual wastebasket homemade pots for drainage. Before that the holes were about over an inch higher in that position so they would collect a lot of fetid water. After I drilled those holes the fetid water drained out and it kind of stank up the balcony until I flushed everything with tap water. So it's day 117. Um, there's a continuous growth but it's very imperceptible because these things are so small. So lemon uh, seedlings just get off to a very very slow start and that seems to be the case. I've watched other people's videos, um, other channels that I'm familiar with and that seems to be the case with other people as well. So all my other plants have been growing very very fast compared to this. Uh, maybe even the Joshua tree is growing faster than this. So at day 126, um, I have to mention eight days ago I gave half a gallon of dissolved fertilizer to all my pots Although I follow the instructions, which is to take one big scoop, which is uh, one tablespoon. I know it's an American measurement. Dissolved in one gallon. Um, that's supposed to work, but I saw some signs of leaf burn in my other plants. And I realized that leaf burn was what happened here. And you can see leaf burn in the three remaining uh, lower leaves. You can see a dead leaf sort of off in the corner there. So the concentration of miracle Grow that's recommended on the container is actually too strong in my opinion. So I decided to fix the situation by doing a massive tap water flush of all my pots. So for most of them I filled them almost all the way to the rim. Not for this pot because I didn't want to soak the leaves, the lower leaves, in water for too long. Although it really only takes like maybe 10 minutes or so to have the water drain out of this before I uh, can water again. So on day 133, four days ago, I performed another massive tap water flush. I would say during this day of filming, I noticed perhaps the greatest growth spurt for all of my plants. And I think that's because prior to that, when I used the miracle Grow according to the instructions, the salt concentration and solute concentration was just way too high in all of my pots. So they, the roots just couldn't absorb any water through osmosis. And you just saw a bug there. That's because I'm filming at night, which is sort of atypical these days. I try to film during the day on weekends. Um, at night when I have these LED panels out, a whole bunch of flying bugs just come over. So these are generally uh, completely devoid of bugs. Uh, nothing really bothers this pot. So I don't even know if the imidacloprid was necessary, but they're healthy and they're not attracting bugs. And they don't have all these uh, spider mite webbings or even spiders around, which is good. Uh, most people instinctively think that um, having spider webbings on everything is some sort of great thing, but really they only eat a fraction of the prey around that are bugging your plants and the fact that they're there really suggests that there's a lot of prey around otherwise they wouldn't set up shop on your plants so that means uh, you've got infestations of all sorts of things so that new leaf is uh, more lightly colored yellow green and it's the biggest one I've seen yet and even these old salt burn leaves um, haven't fallen off so just to expand on the concept of salt burn, which I mentioned earlier, 
Salt burn is caused when the concentration of salts and other solutes is higher inside the soil surrounding the roots compared to inside the roots, inside the plant cells and tissues. So when that happens, the soil can actually pull water out of the plant to balance out that um, salt gradient and hence the first place that the water will come out of is the tips of the leaves. So as you can see for the seedling on the right, that caused salt burn for some of the earlier leaves. So I've had uh, too much salt and other solutes in the soil for quite a while, but at the same time the rest of the leaves are okay. So I think my imbalance was pretty slight. It may have been a case where the salinity in the soil was just slightly higher than the concentration of salts and other solutes inside of my plants. So plants can compensate for this by having an even saltier inside composition um, compared to the soil in places around say salt flats and that's how plants that can tolerate very very high salinities can still survive in very salty environments. Otherwise, they would just get all the water sucked out of them and totally be unable to maintain turgor pressure and grow. So I did a lot of flood waterings, and I think coming off of that extremely over-salted, over-fertilized state, um, the first week and a half, I reckon, that was when I saw this great growth spurt for all my plants, and that's probably because I washed out a decent amount of salt and other solutes to get the concentration from slightly too high out of equilibrium to um, something below what's inside the plants and then they were able to capitalize on all that fertilizer and at the same time still be able to use as much water as they wanted so after a while the growth slowed and I noticed for all of my plants so today I'm gonna start fertilizing again I'm using the small scoop end of the miracle Grow double-ended spoon and just a pinch of crushed vitamins. And the vitamins, um, contrary to what a lot of viewers ended up thinking the last time I tried stuff like this, was not for the purpose of providing vitamins, you know, A through K to these plants because they can make all those things on their own. The vitamins have calcium carbonate and they have a lot of trace metals a little dab of every trace metal and mineral that um, not only humans need but plants as well so that's a good source of micronutrients for my plants just thought I'd give it a try I think with this much reduced um, concentration of fertilizer it's not a fixed measurement because I'm just using powder and the reason I'm using powder is because I don't want the fertilizer to splash on everything um, watering like this I may be adding 0 0.6 gallons. I think that comes out to around 2.25 liters. So that's um, a much lower concentration than what I had before. It's much, much less than using the big scoop per gallon. So it's day 155 um, after I did that light fertilization plus uh, vitamin powder, just a pinch of both. I noticed that uh, all of my plants were doing really well afterwards. Um, they seemed to be growing faster again with no um, negative side effects. I think I'd rather err on the side of having slightly too little fertilizer rather than too much to the point where I'm worried about leaf curling and leaf burn. So this is sort of a testing ground for me. I want to see how much uh, fertilizer I can add to maximize growth while at the same time not coming close to uh, pulling water out of the plants. So this is really important because my plants don't get any direct sunlight. They haven't for the last two months, uh, actually two and a half months since I moved them to this new place. So my old apartment got direct sunlight in the morning for up to four and a half hours on the best day and much, much less than that on the worst days depending on seasonality. So I might have to wait until nearly fall or somewhere closer to the winter solstice to be getting um, sun 
onto this balcony directly for a few hours a day and reflecting off of the sliding door glass. But even then I had direct sunlight before in the morning and it didn't do that much for these lemon seedlings. This is just a really, really slow growing plant. It gets off to a very slow start, but I can see it accelerating. Um, but I don't know if it's really going to accelerate on par with my other plants, which have pretty much all taken off. The Joshua tree, which is five years old, is practically growing faster than these at this point. So the new leaves are coming out here. It does look promising, but it's still so, so slow compared to all of my other plants. And I have to find uh, an optimal point of fertilization. And of course, the salt tolerance for all plants is different. So it might be a very difficult task to find a one size fits all solution for this. So I'm doing a second low dose. I'm using half a teaspoon per 0 0.6 gallons. That comes out to be about an only 18.5% of the fertilizer concentration I was using before when I was following the miracle Grow instructions. So I'll just have to wait a few weeks and maintain this regimen of micro and macronutrient fertilization to see where this takes me with all of my plants. Uh, thanks for watching and please stay tuned for further updates on this lemon growing series.